Welcome to the first in a series of videos for the InventorCam CNC programming software. This video's topic is global software settings. So basically these are the settings you will set up before you even start programming a part, before you even open any files. These are the defaults that you'll use to set up the settings of those files when you do to go to create them. So uh, under InventorCam, we'll go to CAM settings, that opens up your global settings. And essentially everything here is the default settings that will be copied into every new part you create. So we'll start from the top. So the user directories, these are basically the file locations where uh, you'll find various things. So the first one up here is the user directory for CAM parts. Basically, um, when you open up a, uh, an Inventor CAM file, you have the option of where you'd like to save that file. This is the default location for those saved files. Um, you'll have the option on a part-by-part -part basis to choose the location, but if you want to save to just a central location every time, that's this address right here. Um, user directory for system additional files. These will be the files that InventorCam has loaded onto your software, uh, onto your, onto your hard drive, that are tool libraries, the default tool libraries, the default uh, post processors, uh, default locations for pretty much everything. These are just the additional files. Um, when you go to do any kind of threading, either turning or in milling, uh, there is a threading table located at this location. And then any of your iMachining database and material definitions are located in this location. And again, those are just default locations. Depending on your system, if you network everything, you can change these file locations as you see fit. Units, essentially these are the measuring units you're going to use, metric versus inch. Um, this is the default setting, so every new part will assume these units, but you'll have, again, on a part-by-part -part basis, a chance to change that measuring value. Okay, next is default CNC controller. Again, this is the address that all your post files, your post processor files will be kept. And below here are the options for the default selections in each module. So for instance, the one I have my mouse on right now is the milling CNC controller, the milling CNC post processor that automatically is selected when you first open up a milling part. Now, again, you'll be able to go on a part by part basis into the part and actually choose whichever post you'd like to put it on. This is simply just the default location. And it has the same pull down list you would see on that part file. So again, if you tend to use the same machine over and over again, you seem to, po seem, you seem to post to the same machine over and over again, you can select it here and then you're skipping a step every time you open up a new part. And likewise for each module, turning, mill turn, and wire, you'll have that same option. Okay, G-code. Uh, essentially, all you're doing in this page is deciding where you'd like to save your G-code when you post it. So by default, it'll actually just save it in the same directory as the CAM part, as the original part that you've just created. Uh, but you have additional options here of saving it to a particular directory. Again, once you click on this, you can browse to a particular file location. Um, you'd like to save it somewhere near the CAM part in a subfolder. You have many options here as to where you'd like to save the post file. Uh, on the lower part here, we actually have uh, the software you're going, to, you're going to use to review that post file once you post it. So again, you can browse to where that file is. In this case, I'm actually browsed to my notepad, and then when I open up a G-code file or post a G-code file, it'll open it up in notepad for my review. Okay. So under the CAM part heading is all the defaults for things like geometry and stock and target selection. Again, these are just defaults. As soon as you open up the part, it will do these things for you. A lot of automatic stuff can be done under this page. Um, so we'll start from the top here. So I usually have this box unchecked. This actually would just skip the, um, the location of the file selection. So everything I talked about in the user directories could be automatically done for you, and then you would just check this box so that it always saves to that model file directory or to that particular directory that you've chosen in the first heading. Um, but I always like to do this because I always like to save it um, specifically in one place or the other depending on the job. Um, this box right here will allow you to compress the file. So compression is essentially just the type of file you're saving. So if, um, if you were saving it as a compressed file, you would simply just see the inventor cam symbol next to the file name and all those files would be contained inside that one file. If it was uncompressed, you would still see that same sort of file uh, icon, but then you'd see an additional folder with all the uh, geometries and toolpath uh, information in a subfolder. 
So really all you're doing here is just compressing it uh, for file management purposes. While you're working on an inventor cam part, you're actually saving it to a temporary folder. Um, that's for reasons of uh, you know no lag between the network file location, uh, various reasons. Essentially, it's just to simplify the programming of the part. So while you're working on that part, you're actually saving it to this temporary folder that you've browsed to here. By default, it's to a, a user directory under the SolidCam folder. But if you've got a, a certain location you'd like to save your temporary files, you can always browse to that here. So we'll go to the first section under the CAM part definition, and that is the automatic CAM part definition itself. So this is really just more things that you could set up to automatically be done as soon as you open up the part. So use default TNC controller. If you check this box, again, it'll skip that option of selecting the post processor. Again, if you use, tend to use the same one over and over again, or anything here the same over and over again, then you can just skip all of that by checking on that box. Uh, don't show coordinate system manager after Mac on position one. Essentially, if you were creating up multiple Mac positions, then you might just want to leave this unchecked and then it doesn't close that window while you're trying to create them. But if you're only really just creating the Mac on position one and you want to just move on, you can check that box. Uh, again, everything here is an automatic setting. So if I automatically would like it to create my Mac on position one, I can check that box there. If I'd like it to automatically define my stock, either by box or round cylinder, I can check that box. If I wanted to automatically define my target, I can click on that box as well. Now, if, at this point, as an introductory video, if you don't know what this means, essentially, if I have multiple solids on the screen, it's going to choose those solids as either my raw material, my stock, or as my target. Uh, so that is why I actually have these boxes unchecked, because if I tend to program with assemblies, I want to be able to choose my individual stocks and targets or individually choose anything I want to choose without all these automatic settings getting in the way. For the purpose of introductory, I describe what they do. Uh, coordinate system definition. Essentially, these are just um, the, the values that pop up when you first create the coordinate system. So uh, as soon as you assign an upper level, you will now have these automatic settings set to the tool start level the clearance level and the, and the tool Z level. These are just from that upper level. So these are just incremental values from that level. Okay, stock definition. If I do use the box definition or the cylinder definition, these will be the values that will automatically pop up. Synchronization, this is a much more complex use of Inventor Cam, but if you work with um, configurations or anything where you actually need to do any kind of synchronization automatically, uh, you can control that here. Let's skip down to miscellaneous. So if you use a 3D mouse, you can enable that here. Um, if you use a DNC tool, you can browse to that here. Uh, there's many other functions here that are much more application specific. So if you have any questions on any of that, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. Uh, or you can use the new ticket system. If you go to solidcamsupport.com, you can actually su submit us your part, submit us uh, an, uh, an email that goes to the entire tech team, and we can answer all your questions related to this or any other topics that are going to be brought up in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.